Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, episode number 395. Larry here. And Anthony here. And what is going on, good sir? Uh, you know, I, hey, you know, Halloween's over. I have a, I have a bunch of candy sitting upstairs that uh, I'm trying not to eat all in one sitting, and I'm failing miserably at it. <laughs> Did you get a lot of trick-or-treaters? One. Really? Le- like, one. legit just one? Legit but- one. Were they a teenager just like with a with a with a pillow basket, just be a pillow bag? I don't know what a basket is. No, being like, no, give me no. candy. No, no, no. It was an actual kid with their mom. Okay. Well, that's good. So yeah, which which was nice. And I was I was really sad. I was like, oh, I was like I was like, that's it. And she was like, Yeah, she was like, There's nobody like I was talking to the mom. The mom's like, Yeah, there's nobody walking around the neighborhood. And I'm like, Wow, I go, that's really weird. But then somebody had explained to me about like um running all the, the kids off. Oh. No, no, no. Well, no, there's that. I could have done that. But um you know, after the pandemic, because again, I don't have kids, so I don't. I'm yeah. not. I'm, I'm not keyed into this stuff. They started doing this thing called trunk or treat, where uh, you have no idea what that is. I've never heard of that. I've never heard they, that from my friends. Okay, so apparently this became a thing after the pandemic, where like all of the basically the parents set up. Like, I, I don't know if they go to a parking lot, whatever it is, this designated location where they set up all of their cars. And then the kids are just walking around to each car and you're giving them like the candy out of your out of their out of your car trunk. It's like the Lincoln lawyer. What? Yeah. Well, it, it was <laughs> it, well, it was it was a way to still do trick or treating when the pandemic was happening without interacting. So in other words, like you like they would just yeah. come up to the trunk, take the candy and it's move to the next did out car. Here. They just toss it at people. Yeah, I know, right? Phew. I would have gotten one of those, like, like I would have gotten one of those, like, T-shirt guns, like, make a candy gun, <laughs> like a potato gun. <laughs> yeah, get a potato gun, but just shoot, like, yeah. you know, like, kick ass at people. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Robinson. I'll see a kid in the OR. Oops. Yeah, um, or the kids I don't like. You get the baby roof. <laughs> you get actual potatoes. Mm. Uh, so, uh, so the, I guess it's just a tradition that they kept doing, and they failed yeah. to tell you, so you couldn't bring your car over there. Yep. So yeah. So I have like a hundred pieces of candy sitting upstairs, and you know. But you, and at, I don't have self control. So, but at least you, at least you answered the door. Apparently, and this isn't just around here. There's a lot of people that got lazy and just put a bowl out, and you yes. know, like you know, like you know, you know, shoplift if you will. Um, yeah. Please. So yeah. So all right. Yeah, well, hey, look. At least- no, I actually did answer the door. I bought I bought one Halloween decoration to put on the front of the door so people <laughs> knew. Well, you don't uh, have because- much real estate in the front, so not. Well, you know. I, you know, I have a I have a storm door, so it's just on the. Yeah, uh, that's what I meant. Glass. Yeah, yeah. So I I literally put that on. I turned on my light outside to let people know. It's like, you know, and I got one person. <laughs> My door is on the side of the house, and no one knocks on the side door. So no, I've been lucky. To- you would have to sit on your stoop to do it. Yeah, and that's not it, because that'd be no one's gonna come up to me then. Like, who's no. that guy sitting on the stoop? Don't worry about it. Why does he have a, a Super Mario mushroom in his window? It's like, don't worry about it. <laughs> Give the oh, kids well. mushrooms. Yes. That's a whole nother story for the courts. That's a different game. Uh so all right, well, good. Well, I'm glad you had a good Halloween. And um before we get started, I guess I might as well drop this gem on everyone. Um, because I don't know where to put it in the episode. So I might as well just come out and say it. Mm-hmm. Um I'm voting for no, I'm kidding. Uh so No, no, um, no, we're not doing any of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um this does drop on election day, but no, we're not doing it that. It does. It um and my and my parents' anniversary. It's a very busy day, November 5th. So November 5th we're dropping. Yep. And I'm making this news. So folks, you know, if you think it's you think it was a difficult decision trying to figure out who to vote for president, you should think about this decision I'm about to announce right now. But um I do want to uh mention this now. Um I didn't think that was going to happen. Okay. And, uh, you know, I told Anthony about this already. Obviously, I'm not springing it on him because that'd be that'd be terrible. Oh, I'd be. Yeah. Well, that, it would be a great to get a reaction out of me. But no. that's true. Well, the reaction I did get from you initially, not realizing you had company, uh, was <laughs> through me for a loop. So and for about two days, I'm like, is he mad at me? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he was so indifferent. Um, <laughs> but I knew now knowing you couldn't react. Um, I have thought, and I've been going back and forth on this for a long time, and um, I really have, and it's not an easy decision to make, but a decision that I did make, um, and I'll go into more details later on when, when it finally happens, but, um, I will be, um, in the middle of December, 
uh, stepping away from this podcast, from this show. What? Uh, Wait, that wasn't what we talked about? Yes. In fact, I'm leaving now. Goodbye, folks. Uh, uh. Well, uh, you know what? Yeah. I mean, you could you could have just done it this Tuesday. I could have voted you off the show. <laughs> <laughs> you are the weakest link. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, then what, I could have gotten her to replace you. <laughs> or whatever her tagline, whatever the new one, Jane Lynch's uh, tagline is. Uh, um, yes. But uh, yeah, so uh, actually, I, I, we can tell you, um, December 17th will be my final episode here on the Retro Gamers podcast. And um, again, I'll leave all the sentiments and everything like that when that episode happens. But I can tell you right now, obviously, because even if it, did, if it was the case, why would he announce it? It is nothing to do. There's no ill will. There's no issues. There's no problems. Me and him aren't going to kill each other. Um, no more than usual. No, no, not at all. Um, just some uh, opportunities for other ventures uh, have arisen and um, just taking those opportunities um and like i said i'll get more into it as we get closer or, or on that day but uh yeah so these next few weeks is uh you know we'll be wrapping it up here for me for me the show will continue my biggest concern was obviously i mean look i'm not say all be all but i didn't want and you know that i did not want this mm -hmm. show to stop i am I am dying to see what you have in store, especially in 2025. So, uh, and of course, I wish you all the best in the world. But again, we'll save all that sentiments for later. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you should see some of the contracts I already signed. <laughs> it's better than some of the contracts I've given out on other podcasts I've done. I still hear <laughs> from one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's very true. No, but uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, yeah, a bit, you know, some sad news to drop, you know, at the start of this episode. But hey, we got a few weeks left. Let's make the best of them. And then... Yes. Uh, and then we'll have a we'll have a big farewell hoopla, um, you know, on December seventeenth. I've even I've already got a name for the episode too. Which oh, do you? Okay, yeah, don't tell me. On, yep. Nope, not telling you. Don't tell you'll me. You'll find out. But until then, we still got games to talk. Yes, so. let's do that. In fact, with this monumental, not monumental, but with this a uh, sad announcement to make. And happy belated birthday. Yeah, thank you so much. And what a great birthday gift, you <laughs> jerk. <laughs> yes, I am I am I'm levying you of 200 plus pounds of annoyance and grief sometimes given on this podcast. And 400 episodes. <laughs> yes, almost. <laughs> Holy yes. cow. Which by the way, your your last episode will be episode 400. Yes, yes it will. Very good. So Very we're good. right out. Yeah, we're gonna, right it's almost like you knew, you planned. So <laughs> Uh, but yes, thank you for the birthday wishes. Uh, mm. I really appreciate it. It was uh, it was a very it was a very quiet birthday. Okay. Uh, since it you know since it was on a weekday, I was just working. Yeah, so, yeah, those are the worst birthdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, it was never fun. But you know, I did you know I did do uh, I did I did some gaming that day. I took maybe a longer lunch than I should have, <laughs> like that. Uh, and there was cake. Which, oh, you know, very if good. If you know me, yes, there was there was a nice little chocolate truffle cake that I bought Ooh. myself. <laughs> That's good. Well, you know, it's well. Look, you know, I I moved upstate. I'm here by myself. I hear you. I had to celebrate with whoever was here, and that was me and the cats. I was going to say so, two cats, and one of them probably ignored you. Yeah, well, she's right there. If oh, you look they... behind me, <laughs> she's just <laughs> ignoring she's, me as we're speaking. she's done. Oh no, she's looking for she's looking for lunch. <laughs> you know, because it's also it, you know. Daylight savings time. We're recording yes. on Sunday. Daylight savings time just happened, so it's an hour later. She wants yep. lunch. I want lunch. <laughs> it's not even near lunchtime. It's all very oh, confusing. The days, the younger days of going yes. out partying on this night, getting that extra hour. Oh, those are long. Oh, long gone. No, the whole the whole plan is to get an extra hour's sleep. But really, what just happens is you wake up an hour earlier than you normally do. So, and that's what happened to me this morning. And I was like, ah, oh, well, that was a waste. A boo. <laughs> Terrible. But anyway, um, yes, yeah, so a birthday was had. It was really fun. Um, and uh, also, uh, last week, just to throw it out there, special thank you to uh, two middle aged guys yes. trying to work it all out who were on our episode where we were talking obscure or not so obscure horror games. So really fun crossover with Chris and Dave. I always have a blast with them. And uh, it was a very cool, almost like a two-parter because Monday, yeah. the day before, their episode dropped with us on there talking about movies. And then we continued on to ours. So, um, so exactly. yeah, very cool. Uh, two middle-aged guys, great episodes. Check them out wherever you listen to podcasts. Check them out on YouTube as well. Uh, definitely give them a follow. You know, and just to, to finish up the birthday, I did get a little something from you. Oh, if, look at that. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm looking at this correctly. You are um, now. 
Yeah. So, oh, uh, this is nice to get a piece of mail. Uh, did you know that the post office puts a put a stamp on this? Okay. So then now let's break the fourth wall. Okay. So okay. when I mailed that, I don't keep any stamps around. I don't mail anything. So right. I just went to the post office and be like, hey, I need a first class stamp. And normally yep. they just give the default U.S. flag, which I love. I always get the U.S. flag. Though right. afterwards, if I knew this going in, I would have asked for one. Apparently, the U.S. Post Office actually put out Dungeons & Dragons uh, stamps to commemorate the anniversary. Oh, but that would have been awesome. I didn't until later. So the lady puts that on and she goes, uh, you know, she looks at it and she goes, oh, okay, it's a guy's name. Oh, this would be funny. You know, to, to, to put a, a flat, it's a flower stamp. To put a flower yes. stamp on there. I'm yes. like... Okay, just but nail. what I actually what I was gonna say is what they they stamped over it actually they stamped oh, well, that, over the flower stamp and yeah. not that no no not just the seal you know how they usually do yeah. that but now they they put I guess in lieu you know since you know it's election day I'll put point this out it says as in past elections USPS is ready <laughs> I didn't see that oh, <laughs> yes. okay wow. and then underneath it says if you choose to vote by mail please mail early <laughs> oh wow okay that's a lot so. to fit on such a small stamp. No, no, their no, stamp. It, no, no, no. Their stamp. Yeah, 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 yeah boom yeah, over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So really, postmark. just really, yeah, the postmark. No, no, no. There's the postmark and that stamp. Yeah, I know. So I saw her do it. Yeah. Yeah, they're, du they're double stamping. That's what happens so anyway, when you do it in person. Uh, let's get to the card. Let's see what kind of horrible card you got me. What? Uh, nothing. Nothing too fancy. Don't worry about it. Oh, uh, it's perfect. Come on. <laughs> Can we there see you that? Go. Look at that. Uh, look at that. A cat and a clown. Something I love and something I hate put together. Uh, Anthony, in honor of your birthday, a cat's dignity has been lost. Have a good one. Uh, thank you so wording, much. So. No, yeah. no, no. This is really great. And it's a cat, thankfully, not a squirrel. What? <laughs> yeah, well, we're one less in the world, so. We're one less that's squirrel okay. raccoon in the world. Uh, just that's a whole other story. Well, yeah, and what's funny is that I remember getting, um, I got these in the mail. Before I got your card, because you, you forgot. I sure put, did. Yep. You forgot to put the card in the box. Yep. I came home and I'm like, what is this on my table? <laughs> yep. So, but obviously I did save them for the episode so we can open yes, them up. Very good. Um, open the I, bigger one first. Bigger. Okay. Bigger one first. Yep. So I'm worried this is Virtual Boy related. Oh, it's so, right. yeah, that's what's going to happen for episode 400. Yeah. Where, well, if you thought. You know, me uh, <laughs> jigsawing a virtual boy was a lot. Wait till you see what I do next. Thank God you still have all your fingers. I do have all my fingers. Yes. It's, 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 it's nice. Here we go. Open, open, open. Oops. It looks like. Oh, wow. I used to have this. <laughs> it is. It, it's definitely retro. Yep. But it is a VHS copy of Batman Mask of the Phantasm. That's for your uh, your guest room. That is for my guest room. So, so wait, is this. Did you send this to me so that when you visit, you have something to watch? <laughs> Maybe, because that is the best Batman movie. I don't care what anyone says. That is my is, favorite. No, no, no. It is a great Batman movie. And my second um, favorite animated movie of all time. Third. Very cool. Yeah, and for those who don't know, my my guest room has been turned into a retro bedroom, and it's got it's got a VHS. It's got yeah. a VCR. It's got a, uh, a, a CRT, like a, uh, oh, yeah. a tube TV. It's got, I don't know if it's a JVC or a Sony. But I got a Sony in there. I've got my Atari, my original Atari twenty six hundred from when I was a child. That's cool. Hooked up there, working perfectly fine. Excellent. Uh, and Excellent. A bunch of stuff. So this is this is a great gift. Thank Very you. Very good. Love it. Love it. Love it. And then we got the other one with the stars on it. Let's see what happens here. I was shocked. Uh, I still had that wrapping in my house. You you wrap really really well, by the way. That is the first and only time I'll ever hear that because I wrapped someone else's birthday gift and it did not come out as well. I was just I was I was zoned in no, that no, day. I wrapped your gifts. These came out great. Oh, wait. This looks... No. Ah, see, you do pay attention of to Of course. Well, look, you got to finish your collection at some point. Yeah. You know what's funny? I was looking at this a week ago. You uh, know what's even funnier? I bought that about two months ago, and I was praying to God that you never came across it. Very nice. Uh, it is a full sealed copy. Not sealed copy, but you no, know not I mean. sealed. Complete, complete copy of Legend of Zelda 2 Adventures of Link. Uh, it was the one Zelda game I did not have in my collection, uh, and it'll go side by side now with the Zelda you got me for my fortieth. I got you a Zelda for the fortieth. I did you get me, you a Zelda for the fortieth. You got, yes, me, I, oh, you got right. me a complete version of Zelda. They, the first I, Zelda for the for my. I 40th pay attention. I don't. I don't remember. 
<laughs> you remember, but I remember, and this oh. is an amazing gift. Thank you so yes. much, Larry. And really I did appreciate it. I opened it. I looked at everything in there. Is dang, if I remember correctly, dang near pristine. Uh, well, you know, what? go I'm ahead, yeah, and open to, it up. We're gonna go have to it. do it on the show. Do it, do it. Have to do it on the show. Um, yeah, no, I like I said, I bought it a couple months ago, and again, I'm like, please do not let him walk past some sort of vendor or something and come across. Oh, you know game. me, I'll just randomly buy stuff. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow, this this is in great condition. Oh, the tears the yep. game looking good, nice and shiny, nice, yep. and gold. Here's the book that says Zelda cool. 2 on top, just in <laughs> case you didn't know it. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. And then uh it even has the I think um, had something else in there, right? Like a, it has the Nintendo Power magazine. That's what it was. Envelope, yep. which is awesome. And then of course the uh the poster. Uh, well, this do the subscription. Oh, that's Nintendo right. Power. That's right. Yes. It had uh, everything in there. And yep, here's the thing. More. So oh, this is amazing. Cause these are hard, these are harder to come by. Oh, that's the poster. Okay. Yeah, yes. Here's the poster. <laughs> Rip. Now you're playing with power. Look that is that. really cool. That's frameable. That is definitely frameable. Uh two, this is a great gift. Uh no problem. You are awesome, Larry. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you're welcome, my friend. And trust me, when so when I got to the uh, I'll tell this the is story. to e this is to ease the burden too. Oh, really? I, I, of, of your thing. news. When I was like, do I save it for the end? You know, you know, maybe like a going away. But like, no, I got to get him for his birthday because he'll still get it. Well, so going well, you're going away at Christmas. <laughs> I a week before, yeah. Um, <laughs> like Santa. <laughs> <laughs> like Krampus. Ooh, wait. Hmm. <laughs> do I make the connection, Larry <laughs> and Santa? <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're both i don't know i'm did not you get a, did you get it did you get a new job <laughs> I'm, oh if only holy cow i'll do it reindeer poop all day um so when i went to the store and big shout out to game on who had that wonderful uh copy there um yes. when i first got there you know i i had this idea for you i'm like all right i gotta get him zelda too the moment you mentioned when you were at the at the expo this is my this germinated at the expo okay um you're like oh the only one i'm missing yeah, in box you. is Zelda 2. Went, hmm. So when I got there the day I was getting ready to buy that one, he only had the player's choice version. Okay. Which is a nice version. It but is. but you know it says player choice on it and if I remember correctly I'm pretty sure it was a great cartridge, but still original, still beautiful, right. still pristine. And I'm like, ah, maybe I'll wait a little bit longer. So I was walking around the the store and just out of the corner of my eye, I I think he just had it like maybe it just got traded in or something. I'm like, wait a minute. Okay. Like is that a non-player's choice Zelda 2? He's like, uh -huh. yeah. I'm like, all right, now we're talking. So now let's let's talk. Uh so yeah, so so it was going back and forth for a while. So it was very cool. Yeah, no, uh, that 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 is that is awesome. I'm I am a I'm very, very happy to have, <laughs> that I have that in my collection now. Awesome. Uh, now I just need to go and get the rest of them in box. See, you're gonna start a trend with these. Well, I thought I you had a lot box. of them. Wait, what don't you have in box then? Damn it. Maybe in, I... in, no 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 in in box prop what I'm missing are just the um would be linked to the past. Okay. And then um I could have sworn you had that. Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, I have uh reprinted boxes. I don't have original boxes. The one that John gave you a few weeks ago was a reprint. Someone gave you an oh, N64. Did I get that in box? Yeah, you did. I remember you showing it off. Oh, then I do. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. This is where my memory goes. Yeah, that's all right. Um, so yeah, so I'm missing. I'm still missing a couple. Like Link to the Past, for sure. I do not have in box. I know okay. that for a fact. I just oh. have the actual copy. Um, okay. But this is close. You know, and then everything from GameCube on, I've kept boxes. Well, that on, yeah, so. that's. I mean, they pretty oh, much come in boxes. Oddly enough, I think Four Swords Adventures. I don't have. I don't have the original box. I have like one from like like the GameStop box. You know, when they just print. Oh it out yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. because I never, I never bought that. Originally, I never, yeah, I never bought the original copy of that because when it came out, I was like, I don't even know what the, I didn't even know what it was, or I had already moved on to whatever was next. Yeah, it so. it is a weird, interesting game. Like I said, that Four Swords is really like I said, you got to have, you don't have to, but you really should have like a, a Game Boy Advance a and a Game Link cable to really feel yeah. the the gameplay. I've never played that multiplayer though, and that's where that nope. game really kicks in. I know I played it all the way through on my own. Yeah, uh, on the GameCube, and it's a great game. It's, it's fantastic. Great game. So much fun. So, so much. Fun. Yeah. So right, really cool. cool. No, thank thank you so no, much. No problem. Really appreciate my that. No problem. And then uh, on top of that, um, yeah. Any other game related other... birthday gifts? Yeah, or, I got or a, uh, birthday well, money I... you spent on games. 
Uh, well, no, I, <laughs> I did, I did spend some money, um, but uh, there were there were a few other things that ha uh, that came across my uh, uh, that I got to add to my collection, um, and this is compliments of uh, John and uh, John and Jonathan. Oh. Capital Region Electronics Recycling. I have the business there we card go. right here. <laughs> Capital Region Electronics Recycling. Uh, I have some things I have to recycle to them, but I, I've gone. I went to a couple of their recycling events. Okay, which was absolutely like really really cool um and because people really are just looking to find a way to recycle all of their old electronics there's just mm -hmm. no way to do it so if you're in the capital region uh the albany region of new york and you have a bunch of electronics uh just look up capital region electronics recycling they'll help you out with that um so they got a whole load of stuff so um so when I stopped by there, they were they were super they they were busy. They were just getting uh, they were loading up on stuff, which was great because a lot of a lot of it, it amazes me how many people hang first off hang on to all of these things because you think that people would just give up and throw them out, but like people were showing up with like here are four laptops, here's like three desktops, here's like a here are like servers that I had from like twenty years ago, and here's why I think I think because people don't want you know those the hard drives. Like, you know yes. what I mean? Like, like, at least if they know it's going to a recycling center, like, like, I remember like when we would move on to a new PC, when I was growing yep. up, my dad was in uh, the, um, the scrap business and he worked at a, at a, a scrap yard. So I remember every time we would upgrade to a new computer, <laughs> that ain't getting scrapped for nothing. That, that cat. No, 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 <laughs> oh, no, no. Look at him. He, um, yeah, he, he's very needy. <laughs> um, my dad would take the hard drives and bring them down to the scrapyard because they had giant shredders and yep. he'd run it through the shredder, you know, just to play it safe. So that's why I think people sometimes hold on to stuff. I think that's. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no, no. I agree. I have um, I have at least two or three of my previous cell phones still sitting around. Here. That's weird. OK, that's yeah. just odd. Well, just because of the data. But 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 it was. But anyway, but, you know, so they they, <laughs> they get a lot of data. <laughs> Uh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just hung on to them. Okay. I, I have to worry about uh, those. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very upset. I didn't hang on to my flip phone because I loved my flip phone. We were talking about that. I was at a, a party last night. We were talking about stuff. Like, remember when flip phone, remember when phones looked different back yeah. in the day, your like status in society was more the design of your phone, not necessarily exactly. the brand, but the design, like the razor or yep. anything like that. So. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, so while I was at the recycling events, they not only do people recycle um, computers and stuff like that, they recycle phones, they recycle video games, they recycle DVDs, VHS tapes, whatever. So uh, needless to say, my VHS collection got a great, huge upgrade, <laughs> huge upgrade. Like, cause now I, like I brought home, like I brought home like Indiana Jones. Oh, I've wow. got, um, uh, a, a lot of a you lot of ones the phantasm I, you didn't realize <laughs> no, no no i did not I, that i did not uh i did get a bunch there were a bunch of disney movies so I, okay. I i upgraded my disney vhs collection which was cool um adventures in babysitting which i used to watch all the time when i was younger uh did they not just remake that i think i think they remade it and I, oh no no they remade don't tell mom the babysitter's dead that's the one they really recently. they did yeah the christina oh, applegate wow. one which is don't tell mom Right? No, no, no. Which I love. Yeah. yeah oh, great movie. But they, yeah, they yeah. remade it recently. Oh, that's stupid. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so um, there were a couple of things that uh, came into the recycling thing that John and John were very gracious enough to gift me. Um, one of them was uh, a Super Nintendo copy of Super Punch Out. Oh wow. Yep. Which is there, a little blurry there. Oh, on my well, I, I don't know. You know why would someone look to recycle it as opposed to sell it? Even if you don't know what it was. No, like, no, no I I'm don't not play... kidding you. Like this, uh, this can't. Sorry, not to cut you off. No, no, it's okay. Uh, like uh, this <laughs> older woman showed up. <laughs> I'm so, folks. I'm sorry. Cat's uh, Anthony's cat is whacking him in the face with his tail. For those just listening, and Anthony is completely ignoring it. So that's how well, you no, know he's a cat owner. Yeah, this happens yeah. every day. No, I every get day. it, but I just and now, watching and, and you. That, now he's at my feet looking for attention. He just jumped <laughs> off my lap. <laughs> so this is what he does. Um, you were saying so, punch out, yeah. Yeah, no, what I was saying is like this older this older woman walked, just showed up, uh, and she had a box of stuff, and it was all video game stuff, and she literally just passed it off. She's like, don't need it anymore. And in it was like a, a, a Nintendo Wii in box that looked brand new. Wow. And then like three random Super Nintendo games, and this was one of them. Yeah, wow. and and you know it's in great shape, so they passed very. It, yeah, which is great. 
Even even uh, has the uh, even still has the protector on the bottom. Yeah, has a protector on. Yeah, it, which is great. So really cool. Again, not in box, but whatever. Um, and then the other thing I got, which I'm excited to add to my collection, um, because I did not have one, is a uh, Nintendo DS. Oh look, what is? Oh, that's a it's, shell. It, okay. Yeah, that's a shell. It's a yeah. Nerf shell. Yeah, it took uh, me a moment to. Yeah. yeah, and I want to say it feels like it's like glued on. Oh no, it's not glued on. Okay. But the whole point of it and is it's going to yeah. snap it in half at this yeah. point. Yeah. So, but it's in great yeah, condition. That's a really good looking DS. Yeah. Too. And it came, it came with the charger. So plugged it in. I think it may be like, I want to say the first, first. Release. It's not the, f- it's not the, the first release. release. Definitely not the first. First release was a lot bigger. And plus it okay. had a, um, there's not a Game Boy Advance slot on the bottom. Is there? Uh, is that what that is? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It, yes, yes, it is. So that's probably the DS. Uh, it's probably the DSi. Oh yeah. So DSi. That might be yeah. the DSi, which is like oh, good. the so, smaller version of it. Oh good. So I can play Game Boy Advance games. Not nice. only no, you can play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. That was back when the DS nice. came out. The original DS was a lot bigger and a little bulkier actually. But mm-hmm. when the DSi came out, yeah, it shrunk it. But yeah, you could. So that's completely backwards compatible with all Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games nice. on top of the DS. Obviously not 3DS, but right. yeah, no, that's a great one to have. Actually, I do regret because I sold back the DSs as the new ones came out, like I yeah. was upgrading them. I do regret not keeping one of those DSs. So that's ah. cool. That's well, yeah. Cool. So now I'm really happy that I, yeah, really happy I have this because yep. I have um, I bought. You remember I bought a 3DS? Yes. Probably, like a year or so ago, or two years ago. Um, and granted, I, the odds of me playing it are, are not that great, <laughs> but it's nice to have in my collection because now, like the handheld ones, are really just becoming like a collector's thing for Fair me. Fair enough. So, um, so it's just really cool to have uh, in my collection. And then the last thing that I have secured, um, by force, mind you, this one was uh, <laughs> I, I had, I had to, I had to buy this against my will because yesterday, my. PC finally decided that it needed to be put out to pasture. Oh my gosh. Um so uh, and it, I knew I knew it was coming. It had been it, no no, it, it was on it, hospice. Yeah, it was. It was on hospice for about a month and a half. Oh wow. Uh so much so that I got scared and backed up everything to an external hard drive because I was like, "Oh shoot, I go, I can't lose all the stuff on my computer. Yeah. I have too many things on my computer." Um yesterday morning when I sat down to do some actually i was trying to edit something for the podcast just completely froze oh man and i was like oh boy and then when i restarted the computer i was like yep i'm like done Fry. blue screen of death uh I, I i've actually gotten like four or five of them over the past month but it wasn't <laughs> that, it was that was the it hint. was it wasn't blue screen but like when when you turn on your computer and it takes about 10 minutes to open oh yep yep not even, not even like a program. I couldn't open a folder. No, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. So there. I was like, okay. So computer was fried. Oh. Um, I needed so. Oh, you know what? Hey, for for a for a for a, for a desktop to last almost nine years. That is, is insane. 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 I bought that in twenty. I think it was twenty sixteen. It was early twenty sixteen, and and it it was and it, it's take you back. It was. Four, four, four homes ago. <laughs> four moves three, ago. Three cities ago. Four was, moves and three cities ago. Yeah, it was, it was a very long time ago. So, so my computer. Yeah, so years. the computer. Yeah, What's almost What's the matter years. with you? I kept up. Well, I kept upgrading. Doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't think I've ever had a PC longer than five, and that was pushing it. Yeah, no, five and five is about the about the average. Average, yeah, but yeah, but you if Frank you take signed it. No, no, but if you take care of them, I'm taking care of my stuff. If you take care of them, they can last longer. So anyway, so almost nine years, finally had to go. So now I have upgraded to I got myself uh, an HP Omen, which is a gaming PC. Oh, it's specifically a gaming PC. Yeah, it was. Okay. It's a gaming PC, so definitely a lot more powerful, a lot faster. It's great to be able to have like four or five things open and just running at the same time without <laughs> any issue, but. The coolest thing I have to say is I got myself a really nice 32-inch monitor. Wow. 
which is like like I'm like like I'm looking at it right now and it's like blowing my mind because it, it's it's a television. It looks like a, like I'm an old man. This is a television that I'm looking at on my screen. But the fact that I have a 32 inch monitor and I can like like I put so many screens up here now. Not to mention I have a second monitor. Um, <laughs> okay, but, that's just being greedy at this point. Well, no, no, no. Because what's going to happen now is my second monitor is 24 inches and this one's 32. I'm going to have to upgrade the 24 because you know it's you just can... small. And <laughs> next time you go back to Singapore on your video, when you did your video review, there was that that wide, wide, wide screen yes. Uh, monitor. Yes, I saw that, that. next time you go. Yeah. And let me tell you something. I have room to cover that. If I got that, I'd be in heaven. I'd be like, oh, wow. <laughs> this is amazing. I had, I got a, a, at one point, actually when I was living in the apartment, with he who shall not be named. Um, my my <laughs> monitor slash television was like a like a oh god, how big was that? It was probably like 30 something, no, maybe even like 40 inches. Um, it was huge, but it was like the first time I had a widescreen uh computer monitor, and I didn't know what to do with it. You're because like how you are now, you're like, I have so many things open, yet you have to turn your head. Mm -hmm. To, to look at other uh, screens and everything, uh, uh, other... Uh, yeah, it, it's it's wild, but it's really, really cool. Uh, I'm still getting used to it. Literally, like, it's... Uh, I've only been using it for about 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, so this morning I was just like, wait, I was like, this should be easy to do. And I'm, like, downloading programs left and right and stuff. But uh, just really, really awesome. And Is... I will not be buying anything for the rest of... Well, for <laughs> next year. That's it. 2025 is um... out. Yeah, I'm on I'm on the website which you did send. Well, actually you sent a photo to the group. That's right. You did send a photo to the group. I did send a photo. You, you can did. throw you can throw a quick photo up. Uh, uh, I'm not asking it. permission to do anything anymore at this point. Um, no, 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 just what, what am I going to do? Kick you off. <laughs> oh, but that's well, it for my that's there's it. your monitor. Oh, I you found your picture it? with the monitor as well, yeah. Yeah, so you can see side by side the 32 and the 20. That is hysterical. I'll put that up as well. That is <laughs> yeah, hysterical. That it's great. Holy cow. Well, uh, good for you. Congratulations on your new computer. Uh, thank you. Let's hope it. Let's hope it uh, hangs on for nine years. <laughs> See if it's it better at this point. And it's a gaming PC, so at least now you can. Are you plan on getting games for it? Oh yeah, I'm gonna buy like you know every Atari game that was ever made. Good, very good. Get that. So, Steam what are you gonna do going? with your brand new gaming PC? I'm gonna play every four bit and eight bit game made. <laughs> Get that solitaire going, big time. That's right. Ooh, I wonder if it has it. Imagine <laughs> they they discontinued it. Well, I don't, I don't know. Do they still put solitaire on these? Things? I, it's oh, got. They, I think they buy oh the more they have to. Solitaire and casual games. Here we go. Hey? Established in 1990. Oh, Sounds it just asked me, but it gives me a prompt. Do you trust this <laughs> to run? <laughs> I was like, it's solitaire. Do you trust Microsoft? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's too funny. Uh, it's like, yeah, do you trust Microsoft to run the... Oh, wow. They they have upgraded their solitaire quite a the bit. The fact that you're looking up is hysterical. Oh, yeah. I, ha I have to look up. Yes, I see your eyes I going now have up. To, yes. I, I now have to look up. It has solitaire, Mahjong, Jigsaw, Sudoku, Jewel, Gem Drop. Where is it? Come on. Where you haven't it? named oh. one yet. What? Which one? Minesweeper. There it is. There it is. Minesweeper. Fantastic. Gotta All right, good. Well, you... Enjoy your new computer. It's very cool you when you get a much. new computer. I remember those days. Well, so. this was this, this was uh, you know this was well, a necessity. Actually, it sounded like it. Yeah. Well, it was necessity, but it you know maybe it was also partially to soften the blow of your bad news. <laughs> okay, I, bro, I have been there. I have gotten bad news, and that day I walked out with a fifty-five inch television, an Xbox One X, and a PS4 Pro. So I know mm -hmm. all about compensating. Oh no, yeah, no, no, that was me yesterday. Like, <laughs> dude, I am. Let me tell you something. When I have to, when I'm being forced to do something, I am an, <laughs> I am an angry shopper. I am, an, and not only am I an angry shopper, but I need to get it over with as quickly as possible. Like, I as soon as it as soon as it busted, I went to Jack because Jack, you yeah. know, Jack is the our guru yep. with uh, PC stuff, and I said, Jack, I need I need a new computer, and he's sending me things of like, oh, here's one here and here's one there and everything like that, and it's like, oh, it'll only take seven days to get here. I said, no, I need a computer today. I was like, because I don't want to be angry for a week because I do. I get I get really mad when I have to like replace something big, <laughs> and I just need like as soon as it's over, the anger's gone. I just I, I just get annoyed with having to do all the work. Um, I said, I need something today. He points this out to me and he said, he's like, well, he's like, if you need something today, he's like, I guess this will work. I said, Gee. <laughs> it's like, thanks for the endorsement. Uh, <laughs> I guess you can go to Best Buy, whatever. 
But, well, because computer stores don't really exist anymore. It's Not Best really. Buy. It's Best Buy. It's Staples. It's Walmart. Like, I got, you got to go to one of the big chains. I happen to have a micro center out here. There's like five in the country, and one yep. of them is by me. And yep. they are a legit computer store. Oh, no, no. That's yeah. where he wanted me to go. He's like, oh, he's like, you should really go to micro center. I said, the closest one is two and a half hours away in Jersey. So <laughs> I wasn't driving. I wasn't. Trust me, in my state, I was not going to road rage for two and a half hours <laughs> to go buy a computer. Sir, why are you doing triple digits? I need a new PC. Carry on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we understand. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I needed. Yeah. So like this had to be done within 24 hours. And, I, and I'm much happier now that it is done. Very good. Well, I'm happy for you. I'm very happy for you. It's always good to Thank get something you. new like that. So. So uh, did you buy anything? Because I went um, on for a very long time about. Yeah, you did. Well, it was your birthday. So you could be greedy. Um, I didn't speak in a greedy. So oh, bad. there he's back. He never does two shots. What is this? I'm not paying him um, cat, cat food. Yeah, no, he, he want No, he wants treats. I don't think I can afford cat food for him. We'll work for treats, right? Um, for treats. The only well, I'll say this. So the day I picked up uh, the VHS tape for you, Mask of the Phantasm, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of stores now like VHS tapes are making a comeback. Yeah. And I, I, I it boggles my mind that it would go back that far. But hey, look, vinyl's still hot. VHS. I was just about to say, like, it's the same way vinyl made a comeback. They just yeah. all like, uh, like, give me. But when are we going to get Betamax? <laughs> look, Betamax I'm still so waiting. Back? When when HD DVD makes a return, okay? Yeah, I wish I still had trouble. my player. Uh, so um, the day, so when there was a nice collection, it was with various games and everything, um, uh, movies. So the day that I picked up your Mask of the Phantasm, I picked up which I have. It's nowhere digital. And I found like a bootleg version on YouTube to watch Godzilla 1985. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, man. I was so happy to find that copy. I don't know if it has the pre um, the pre movie short Batman ver uh, Batman Godzilla versus Bambi. Yeah. So uh, hopefully it's on the tape. <laughs> Godzilla versus Bambi. It was it was his very it was an animated short. It was like hand drawn animated short. And it, oh, it's like gosh. maybe three minutes. And it's Bambi. Just, you know, it's a white background with just stick figures. It's okay. Bambi just grazing, right? Whatever, grazing, <laughs> kind of looks up, grazing. And then all of a sudden, boom, just a, a Godzilla's foot just squash. And you see all four oh God. paws come out. And you see like kind of like like his toes like like quiver. Twitch. Yeah. Nice. And then credits. And me and my dad laughed hysterically when we saw this for the first that time. That is amazing. So, and Godzilla 1985 is an amazing movie, and it's the 70th anniversary of Godzilla. In fact, we just celebrated Godzilla Day. Oh, uh, happy ago. birthday, Godzilla. Oh, I can't wait. They just announced a brand new movie coming out, like a Japanese yes. movie. Oh, Godzilla minus one. Mwah, chef's kiss. But, um, so yeah, so I picked up, so I picked up a VHS tape. Um, nice. And it's not the only one I got recently. So, not as much a purchase, but a Kickstarter campaign. Um, okay. I got the rewards for and we've talked about it before. Uh, in fact, we had one of the directors on the show, Stan Puzdriak, and it's Memory Card, uh, the short that was made, mm -hmm. um, and that I backed. We both backed, actually, at one point. We did. Um, and side note, before I forget, the movie will officially be released on YouTube uh, on November 18th. Nice. So go to Rebel Monkey Production on YouTube. Uh, hit the notify button so you're aware when the movie drops. Uh, again, it's the full movie on YouTube, and it's we both saw it, of course. I, I loved it. I absolutely adore the movie. Um, maybe, maybe not because my name is in the movie, but be that as it may. And it's very mm -hmm. stay for the credits. Stay for the entire credits. Um, but I got the uh, rewards from the movie. So first thing I got here, I'll try to put up pictures as well, but I'll hold up. I got a nice poster, movie poster. Ah, very nice. Every card. Signed by the director. Ooh, so, signed. You gotta, you gotta get that frame. I do. I actually, that's what I'll be doing tomorrow. I'll be getting frames. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got, uh, oh, don't fall. Thank you. Nope, no falling out of your chair. I got a copy of the script. Signed. Oh, that's awesome. Signed as well by the writer. So very, very nice. Very cool. Uh, got a, I believe, oh, if I can remember correctly. I believe these are called DVD Blu-rays. These are called Blu-rays. Hey, a Blu-ray. So I got a Blu-ray of memory card. And yep. on top of that, which was very gracious, um, Stan, uh, fan of the show now, I think I can easily say, uh, friend of ours, absolutely, I can say. And he actually posted this on 
uh, the feed on the Instagram feed saying this is for more 365. You know, his version, his copy is heading out. And that is the VHS version of nice. memory cards. So, well, now you need a VCR. Is. I do. He asked. It was funny, too. He asked. He was like, so what kind of VCR do you have? I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And uh, <laughs> he's well, like, because you, you got your VHS head and out. Well, I, I know somebody who can hook you up at once. So. <laughs> it's a collector's item. So that is have, now the. I have three. <laughs> and three. are any of them a new HDMI one? Uh, no. <laughs> there you go. No. <laughs> I uh, Two of them are combos, though. <laughs> You've always had the combos. <laughs> I know. I do like the combos. So, uh, so I got those in, which are very cool. Okay. And again, I love the movie. We love the movie. So check it out. November 18th on YouTube memory card. Uh, the only other thing I bought, which is more new, um, mm -hmm. is uh, a game that uh, actually a friend of ours, uh, Thunderdome Gaming Society, who was on the podcast uh, about a month ago or so, uh, has been talking about this game ad nauseum. He's always messaging me. Have you got it yet? Did you pick it up yet? I'm like, no, mm -hmm. until this past week when Nintendo did a free game trial. Of this game, and I fell in love head over heels for this game called Vampire Survivors. Oh, yeah, you told me about this. Oh, my gosh. It's available on all the new systems. You know, it's current game. It's mm -hmm. a roguelike shooter. It, it's almost like an over hype, not over hype, like an oversized mobile game. Because basically oh, what you do is you start off, you have your character, and you have different classes or whatever, mm -hmm. and you have one weapon. Like a, uh, It could be a projectile, whatever it is. All you do is move. The firing is automatic. But oh. what happens is enemies swarm you. That's really what it is. Just enemies just, swarm you. Okay. But as you kill enemies, as you collect gems, you power up your weapons. As you power mm -hmm. up your weapons, the swarms get more and more. To the point where, like, if you last long enough, the idea is to last 30 minutes. That's clear okay. on the stage. I've done it twice so far. That's how difficult oh, it is. Interesting. Because at points, it will get to the point where the screen is full of enemies and you cannot move like it literally oh, wow you're set up to die but mm -hmm. to say it is so addicting to just slowly upgrade because that's what it's all about and you can do permanent upgrades you know when you okay. collect gold and everything and their dlc they just dropped a castlevania deal official castlevania dlc I gotta look this up. Yep, they dropped um they dropped a contra dlc recently and then some other dlcs vampire survivors um even though I played it on the Switch, I ended up getting it on the PS5 because it was the cheapest of all the systems. Okay. It was on sale. It might still be on sale. Like three bucks. No, nope, it's on sale for Steam right now. It's, uh, probably 30 cents on Steam because Steam's always ridiculous with those. Ah. This again, um, this looks really fun. It is so much fun. If there's a demo on Steam, download it. Um, but I, oh, I, I've been playing, I played like two hours straight on it the other day. Oh, wow. Uh, it's, and again, all you do is just move. There are like, you can find stuff. You have to find, um, hmm. each level, which is ginormous, has a coffin to find. And the only thing I haven't figured out yet, when you hit 30 minutes, yeah. Dracula shows up, but and Dracula shows Im it, Im Im literally immediately. Really? But, no. Yeah. No. Like, I guess it just signifies the end of the game, the end of the level. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, that makes sense. I did hit him once, which means I think he's defeatable, but it might be, again, something where you have to, like, up, eventually upgrade all your weapons and then okay. get a shot at it. But it's such a time killer. Oh, my God. It's so much fun. The music. Okay. Is so check that out. Vampire Survivors. Right. Uh, Definitely check that out. It sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, so much fun. You ask me or Thunderdome Gaming Society. Uh, as I say, multiplayer? It is co-op. Yes, and it is I, I believe it's online co-op. I don't think it's couch co-op. So okay. um, so if you do get it, get it for the PS5 because I don't think it's cross-platform. Ah, uh, bummer. Yeah. So well, right. it's, a, it's a tiny, you know, it's it's a tiny thing. Um, okay, good to know. It's up to, it's up to four players. That's how co-op it is. Ooh, all right, cool. So I like that. And that's basically all I got. So, uh, and that's what I've been playing cool. ad nauseum for the last week or so. Ah, uh, okay. Well, uh, go ahead. <laughs> that's the last thing I bought. It's not the last thing I spent my money on. Oh. So as it dropped what a couple weeks do? ago, yes, I am now waiting for the first quarter of 2025 for my analog 3D. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that one's not surprising at all. I knew you were going to go for that. Uh, you know what? The the love of the super uh, the N64 mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the praise that this system is getting and looking like. Um, 
I, it's, oh my gosh, cannot wait. Did not sell out as quickly as I thought it would, shockingly. Hmm. There was a, uh, they had, at price wise, yeah. it was kind of high, I thought. No, 250, 249, which is about average for their systems now. Remember, okay. it's, they're like, they're the Ferrari of the game system. So you pay, you yes. get what you pay for. This yes, is a, you say that a lot. I do because it, it makes sense. It's a 4K system. So, mm-hmm. you know, and like they say, that's really the only way to be able to play N64 games on a modern console mm-hmm. is to have it in 4K. Uh, they had a black version and a white version. Uh, so I picked up the black version. I mean, that was more um, classic. However, the white version sold out first and the black version was still for sale like another two days before it sold out, which is kind of weird. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, of course, 100% backwards compatibility, uh, which Polymega cannot say. And um, hopefully it will work with, as it should, work with the Switch N64 Bluetooth controllers. Oh, nice. Okay. Which I think would be perfect. I mean, there's plugs for regular controllers, but um, Mm -hmm. so now I will be hunting for N64 games. I don't know. I mean, I have I I don't have a very robust N64 collection. Do I? Now that I think about, I don't think I had one back in the day. No, I. You know, I N64 was one of the consoles where I stuck to. I basically stuck to the true first party games like the Mario's, the Zelda's. Um, yeah, it's like stuff. when you found a game on the N64, you play. So I have six I have Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Okay. Cru- Cruise in USA. Okay. Um, Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. Fantastic nice. game. And then uh, the three wrestling games WrestleMania 2000, mm-hmm. No Mercy, and WCW NWO Revenge, which is nice. nice. Pretty much. Oh. I mean, I get world tour, but I well, I, tour. I apparently stand corrected. <laughs> you have two hundred and seventy four uh, games. I have, according to according to my my collector's app, I have thirty seven and sixty. Wow, games. I don't think I had that many in the original run. Well, you said you have six, and three of them are wrestling games, right? Yep. Three, four, five, six. Seven, and I don't think eight, I have any nine, Japanese games. Ten of my games are wrestling games. One, two, three, four. This four All right, ready? Uh, I'll just go through it really quick. I have them right here. I can probably uh, e- yeah. ECW Hardcore Revolution. Yep. And then WCW Backstage Assault Mayhem <laughs> Ni- Nitro World Tour and Revenge. Mm-hmm. And then WWF Attitude No Mercy Warzone and WrestleMania 2000. Backstage Assault. Did you ever even play that? I did. You know, I played the um, I played it on PlayStation. I think once. And oof. Yeah, that was around. That was the last one. Someone Hey, decided... here's a great idea for a wrestling game. Let's remove the ring. Yeah, no ring. Who needs what? 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 What are you talking about? It's brilliant. <laughs> You'll just fight backstage. Uh, can't we have the ring and fight backstage? No. <laughs> that, like every other game? No, why do that? That's <laughs> just silly. Um, so yeah, so uh N64 should be shipping first quarter of 25. So we'll see how that goes. Knock on wood. But yep. uh now, but that means now though, I am in a serious pickle because that might be the 16th then system that I'll have in my 16 Uh-oh. HDMI switch. You're at, you're done. So yeah. So I don't know what to do from there. Wow. Well, wish you the best of luck. Um, so what was I just going to tell you? Oh, there's one game I've been playing for the past week. Okay. Uh, not past week, past couple of weeks, because a couple of weeks ago um, I had traveled to Singapore and, you know, we put up the video and stuff like that. And I'll always, I always take games with me to play. Uh, I took my Switch this time. Oh. Uh, I usually al- I usually alternate between Switch and Steam Deck because sometimes mm-hmm. sometimes when I know I don't want to get involved in a game because you know because I'm traveling, I just want something a little less like a little more money. Gotcha. I'll take the Steam Deck with me because I'll play stuff like Power Wash Simulator or oh, okay. um, or I'll play like one of the many many board games that I have mm-hmm. on Steam. I have like a ton of board games on Steam. And that way, it's just you know, simple, quick, mindless type of things. Uh, but I did take the Switch with me because I picked up Legend of Zelda: Echoes of Wisdom. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, so okay. P- picked it up. Um, so uh, I started playing it while I was traveling, and then brought it back, and I've been playing it. Uh, I've been playing it since I got home. Wow. Oh, that's a good S- sign. Such a great game. Okay. Really great. Um, I you know there you know there's a lot of. Uh, some of the reviews are kind of like, well, the whole the whole aspect of like, you know, copying things. Doing yeah, the that's what concerned me. Stuff, it's a little, conf- yeah, it's a little weird. But you kind of get used to it after a while, and and 
it plays it plays like Link's Awakening, you know, the remake they did. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. but what's really welcome, what, what I really like about it is that it's going back to the Legend of Zelda roots. So, like, they have their own version of dungeons in there. Okay. And it's just great because it reminds me of the original one, the original Legend of Zelda. You know, you're walking around the overworld. Granted, the overworld is now, you know, Hyrule the way you know it from, like, Breath of the Wild, where mm. you have the, the Gerudo area and the Goron and all that stuff. Um, but you're still going through, like, these different, you know, whatever their version of dungeons are to play through the game. And so far, it's been really fun. Like, I've, I think I've completed the first two Okay. Um, the first two dungeons, and I'm like, okay. I was like, yeah, this is fine. It, is is it my favorite Zelda game? No, um, but it's it's a cool original idea, you know, where it's like you're not playing as Link anymore, you know, this time mm-hmm. around. Um, and uh, yeah, and just the the gameplay is different. So I yeah, I, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I'll definitely play through it all the way. Uh, no question about that. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I was basically waiting for your review to pull the trigger on it. And I just pre-ordered uh, a game on the Switch because um, I bought the um, you can buy the uh, the vouchers on the Nintendo Switch mm-hmm. for one hundred dollars. You get two vouchers and you can download. Oh, yes. two. Yeah. And sometimes you can save between 10 and 20 bucks. Or if you're buying Breath yep. of the Wild, save 90, apparently. But um, the uh, I just did one for actually it was a boxing, a fitness boxing game that i was getting ready to, to do um but it's cheap enough it's on the cheaper end that i think i'm going to now use that voucher and literally when we're done recording i think i'm going to pick up echoes just based on yes. what you just said about it so yeah no it's it's that it, it's really cool and it, like i said it's it's a little bit different it, you know it, there's like a, a little bit of a learning curve to kind of figure out Fair. okay this is how i do it um but once you get that down it's it, it's just a it's a fun okay. game sounds cool Sounds yeah, cool. And cool. Um, you know what? We're kind of rolling on here. We kind of new stuff, but I think we should get into this topic. We're going to kind of save it for news, but I want to get into this topic now because we're, we're on this roll about buying, uh, talking about games. Yep. Um, and I mentioned the analog, but I also mentioned the Polymega. And yes, I took a very fun shot at the Polymega during my review of the analog. But the Polymega is Well, you're really... just still hurt because you canceled it. <laughs> my wallet hurt yeah but i don't regret it no no your your wallet hurts today because of all of the systems you've had to buy to make up for the one poly mega system you canceled i can pull out 12 games right now from my collection that i can play on my analog that we already tested will not work on your poly mega Uh uh-huh sure i got a bridge to sell you So Polymega just made this announcement a couple days ago. The announcement of the Polymega Collection. Yes, this is very exciting. And um, again, for me, not for you. No, but <laughs> true because they, they just besides a, a software update, um, mm-hmm. they announced this thing again called the Polymega Collection. That is a physical collection of games that is only. Now, this is a huge step in their direction, which I praise them for. Uh, the, it, these games are only playable on the Polymega. Yes. Which I think is huge. And they've announced two so far. The first two are Asteroids mm-hmm. and, in an, in my opinion, an interesting choice, Karate Champ. Yes. I, I was surprised to see that one, too. So with these games, basically, in a nutshell, what it is, um, they have, well, first of all, it comes on a CD. So mm-hmm. it's a you know a custom CD for the Polymega comes with a pin of some sort of a limited edition pin so it's like a collectible yep. thing there, um, and it has multiple versions of these. So you're not just buying asteroids, you're no. buying like five or six versions of asteroids. You're actually buying seven games. Oh, was it? Oh, here they are. I got them right here. Yeah, I have that list right here too. Yeah, uh, go for it. Uh, it's uh, Orbit arcade version of Orbit. More mm-hmm. than seven, actually, if you look at it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So arcade version of Orbit, arcade and 2600 version of Gravitar, arcade mm-hmm. Lunar Lander, arcade 26 and 78 of Asteroids, arcade Asteroids Deluxe, mm-hmm. the Lynx version of Super Asteroids and Missile Commands. Yeah, that's cool. And, yeah, very cool. And the arcade version of Space Duel. Mm-hmm. And what it comes with, it's so these are actually printed on DVDs. I shouldn't even say CDs. These are actual DVDs yeah. that are mm-hmm. being printed on. There's a visual companion that comes with it, controller reference. Uh, you can change out the spine card for like France or Japan. Uh, yep. They have stickers and again, um, a collector's pin. 
and it very cool what they're doing here. Um, and being an owner of a Polymega and being a fan of uh, physical media, not getting into the physical versus digital, but just you yeah. leaning towards the physical. What are your thoughts on Polymega, which is kind of designed to be a digital system, kind of sort of with this announcement of these physical games? Yeah. No, I, I mean, I think this is really smart on their part. I mean, because um, to me, this is almost like capitalizing on what Evercade has done. Because Evercade okay. is, yeah, because Evercade has created a physical console where, yes, you do buy physical cartridges, but the cartridges are all collections. Mm -hmm. So I think that they're just kind of going in that direction as well. I was, it, it was very surprising to hear this because I know for a very long time, they were talking about how they were going to have like a digital store, like the digital store is coming, it's coming, it's coming, and it hasn't, it hasn't arrived yet. Um, so I like, I like the fact that they are releasing stuff like this and what they do with it is the most important thing. Like, in other words, it's like, because these games are older, it's like, what are you going to give me that makes this worth the purchase? Because these are 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. I was like, so you got a good number of games. That's a good start. I was like, what other elements are going to be in there? Now, one, uh, and what I like about these is they're giving you the arcade design yes. for each game. So when you boot it up to play, it actually gives you all of the artwork that would have been on the arcade when you played this. And I thought, and I'm like, okay, I go, that's really cool because, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I'm sure there were a couple of different places that have, uh, different companies that have done this. But I, mean, I, I can't remember which ones. They've all done it, be honest with you. They've, they've all, all like it. borders, yeah. custom borders and stuff like that. Yeah. But you're right, the way they're really doing it up with the with the cabinet um, uh, artwork and, yeah. not, and, and the Lynx artwork as well. You know, you have like a yes. border that looks like the Lynx. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think th I think that's a cool touch to it. Um, I for for me personally, the 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 jury's out on whether or not I would buy these, and the only reason why I say that is because I pretty much have all of these. Agreed. It would just be it would just be if I want it to have that extra like arcade look to it. What they're calling it, they're calling it like immersive mode. Yes, is what they're calling it. Yeah. Well, also because they, you are able to, now I don't know anyone who's ever done this, but you can put your television on its side and you can yep. play in upright mode, which is, that's actually, that would be wild to see that happen, but yeah, you can see, play. What, yeah. I'm trying to, I was going to say, how can you do that? Like I have, um, I have my TV on a, on a stand, like yeah. a, not a stand. Um, yeah. Wall I have my TV. Not it's not a wall map, but it's a mount. Okay, but it, yeah, but it but it has a stand because I didn't want to drill into the wall. The, yeah, I don't. And I, I don't. I don't know. Like you know, if no, my there's seven, if my seventy inch TV <laughs> could go like this. I mean, can you imagine like a, a seventy inch TV vertically playing Karate oh Champ my or God. Asteroids? Can you imagine that's not even the size of it. That's just oversizing you well, it. You might as well just put me in the game at that point. <laughs> yeah, Nick Arcade. Um, yes. so, and you know, they have uh, like Atari Lynx LCD and Quadra scan they have on here, mm -hmm. virtual display modes. Um, so there's a lot to it. And of course the idea is that, um, um, preservability of yep. the physical media. Um, so, but again, this is the initial announcement. These are the first two games to come out and they, I mean, look, they're Atari and data East. Two mm -hmm. big name companies. So if they're starting out with these two, only imagine, you know, what could happen down the road. And let's talk about sure. Karate Champ for a moment. Yep. So Karate Champ is going to have. Actually, this is kind of cool because this kind of. And again, this is forty bucks. This is what you get. You get the arcade, the NES, and the Famicom Disk System of Karate Champ. All right, enough of him. This is why I'm he leaving. Will, he will okay? not leave me alone. Will he be the new co-host? This is the new co-host. Right Can you here. imagine Say buy him a the new co-host? Buy him a small head of headphones and just <laughs> sit there and do an episode. That would I he, would watch that. I, I'm sure you would. <laughs> um, so again, the arcade NES and uh, Famicom Disk System of Karate Champ, the arcade version of Karate Champ PvP, arcade SNES and Super Famicom of Fighters History, mm -hmm. arcade Neo Geo CD Saturn yep. version. And I'm guessing just the Neo Geo version of Fighters History Dynamite slash Karnov's Revenge. Yes. So this one comes with the game DVD, Karnov's Revenge Neo Geo CD separately. So this one's mm -hmm. a double disc yes. game. 
Um, and then all the other same stuff as before, the sticker, the pin, mm -hmm. the spine cards, and everything like that. Yeah, see, and this one's more appealing to me because of uh, Karnoff's Revenge. I've never played Karnoff's Revenge. It's it's a fighter, I'm going to tell you now. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a 1v1 fighter. Yeah, but, but still. Would still, be fun. very, and again, showing what they could do with future releases. Yes. So... Uh, and again, you get the you get the really cool cabinet looks. You know, if if you do, if you if you know, you get three people to help you rotate your television. turn your TV, yeah, rotate that TV. Yeah, two of your friends just to hold the TV there while you play. Yes. So, but again, in theory, very cool that Polymega is doing this. And again, these are exclusive to Polymega. So now you have exclusive games for the Polymega, which I think is pretty cool on its own. Yeah, no, I think this definitely ups the appeal of the Polymega for sure. And it, it, it seemed like it was only a matter of time before they were going to go the physical route because almost everybody is going the physical route except for you. So you know, I, I have no room. I told you nothing personal. No, no you have no room. Personal, you only have 16 consoles. <laughs> I do. Soon 17. Um, yeah. Each each release is region free. Well, the Polymega is region free. Yes. Uh, and works will work on the Polymega regardless of where you are, what language you speak. Um, and the other cool announcement with this was the software update for the system, because besides just improved displays and whatnots and everything. Uh, and uh, apparently some games that were packing games that got deleted on one of the mm -hmm. uh, upgrades is coming back. They're putting those oh. games back on. I don't nice. know which ones they were, but I think it was on the, I think the original PM01, which I think is the base system. Okay. Um, but they're loading up the database with as Ant mentioned before, because this is coming yes. out with 2600 and 7800 games, because they will be releasing an Atari Pro module details yes. to come soon. And I will be pre ordering that module as soon as they announce it to add to my collection. I can only imagine that's cool. And that's where Polymega announced before, as we mentioned, uh, hitting for the Atari VCS, which I'm not going to lie, basically the only two reasons then I would have the VCS is for Ant Stream Arcade, because I got my free mm -hmm. uh, subscription on there. And Polymeg is putting out like a light version of their system that I might uh, pick up down the road. Yeah. So, any, any, anything, anything you can do to make that thing worth something what is yeah, definitely welcome. Uh, aside from the trash heap, of course. It's got a lot of promise. Okay. It really did. And it's. It, it, no, no. See, it had promise. It doesn't have I, promise because it's all but dead. You could have gotten that as your PC and save a whole lot of money. Yeah, no. There's there's no point in having that. It's every point in having it. Um, no, so no, but, zero, zero. So, All the recharge games that are on there were released elsewhere. I feel like I'm going to be saying this a lot. This is why. This oh, is that what you say? Oh, is that what, is that what it is? <laughs> If that's the case, then I might as well just buy up all the Virtual Boys and destroy them. I should make a list. And on December 17th, be like, here's, here's my list as to really what. No. Yes. Um, so very, if, if but, you do, we can read it off on the last episode. I, it'll be like it'll be like Santa. Can you dress up as Santa? Like Santa, here's why here's why I'm leaving. This is why you've been naughty. I start growing <laughs> just, out my beard. Yeah, maybe. All right, we'll see what happens. I already got the white beard. It is, it is Movember. It is. Oh, that's right. Oh boy. I yep. Grow it out. I look interesting. Well, yeah, during the pandemic. Oh my God, it looked like I was homeless. I, I, I grow mine out, but I just don't want to. <laughs> so great to at least hear Polymega making some huge, huge yes. steps and huge news. So definitely check that out. If you don't have a Polymega, check it out at polymega.com. And again, Ant was head over heels over it. So if yes. he enjoys it, you know it's a good system. And I don't know if you heard, but there is a wonderful gaming magazine that's out there that everyone should be subscribing to and checking out. Uh, yeah, I heard a little rumor about that. And maybe it's because I have the game, the magazine right here. Ah, me too. Oh, good. Different issues. So yes. <laughs> old school gamer magazine. Yes, it's a wonderful magazine. It has great reviews, great articles about, again, the games that we talk about, the games that we play and we love playing. Yes. And uh, what I do like about them, too, is uh, at least the, the couple of issues that I've read, uh, they actually do stick to like a specific topic for each magazine. So like issue number 42 that I have here in my hand is all about arcade gaming. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I got 41, Definitely. which is about Atari and some old school stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 41 is about Atari. I actually read I actually read through the entire um uh, number 41 while i was traveling oh. uh because when you're on a plane for 18 hours you have a lot of time so <laughs> i so i plowed through that one and i'm about halfway through uh number 42 uh 
uh, talking about arcades. And it just it, it's it's great to it's just great to go back because it just stirs up a whole bunch of memories. Uh, because while I'm reading the arcade game version of this, I'm thinking about all the times I used to go to Buddy's on Flatbush Avenue. And I used to just play it. I used to just play arcade games nonstop. There were, you know, my dad would take me eating those cheeseburgers, playing video games. It was attached to a Burger King. So yes, yes. Eating it. Yeah. Yes. Eating a Burger King cheeseburger and learning why I liked McDonald's better. How uh, dare you? And play. Sorry, Mickey D's, Mickey D's always. But uh, yeah, but uh, this magazine really like great articles, very insightful. A lot. Again, a lot of nice uh, reading about other people's memories. Yes. Uh, of when they were gaming and stuff like that. It's just a really, really fun throwback. Um, and just uh, the artwork is fun. <laughs> I do like the artwork. I will say it is very cool. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, so, yeah. So, go for it. Yep. So, check them out oldschoolgamer.com. And you can get your subscriptions there on both digital and something called print, apparently. Uh, yes. It's still alive and well. Yep. So, yes, it is. So go I, check. I signed I signed up for the print versions. Yes, and I will be getting digital um, because I have a Kindle and I got to use it. So <laughs> might Kindle, as well justify it. My Kindle needs to just go in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> so go get your subscription. Check it out at oldschoolgamer.com. All right, Larry, it is time for this week's Game of the Week. Oh, oh yeah, it's been a little while. Well, it has been. Well, la- last week we talked all horror games, right? Okay. So we didn't yep. we didn't have a we didn't do a game of the week because actually last Thursday was Halloween. It was. So uh, I know you were out trick or treating. Gotta get that uh, candy somehow. Yep. And I convincing and the I, adults is tough to do. It, it really is. And I was home eagerly anticipating the one child who was going to show up and <laughs> get candy. What was the me. child dressed as? Uh, uh, she had the skeleton outfit. Oh, I wasn't even a good the, one. And, and, and no, it was a generic outfit, but that's Fair. okay. Perfect. She was cute. She was a cute skeleton. So she she earned three pieces of candy. Wow. Three pieces of candy. I should have given her 20 because <laughs> cause stupid me always worries that, you know, more kids are going to show up and nobody did. So now the fat person is going to be me as I keep eating the candy upstairs. Um, but anyway, so we didn't have <laughs> – there was a seg- segue. Uh, tangent. <laughs> Uh, so we didn't have game of the week last week. We're gonna do game of the week this week. Um, and since Larry has announced uh, his countdown to leaving the show, uh, I it's my turn to decide. And I want to stick to some more iconic games that I never thought you know we we would get to once in a while. But now mm-hmm. I think you know we don't have that that much time left. So we're gonna hit the, we're gonna hit the heavy hitter this week. Oh, okay. Um, and in, also, in addition, because uh, you gave me such a wonderful birthday gift, I want to do for Game of the Week this week the f- original Legend of Zelda for NES. Not Zelda 2. I know you gave me Zelda 2. But Legend of Zelda, the start of the franchise, the start of my obsession with really awesome adventure games will be this week's Game of the Week. If I if This literally just dawned on me, so forgive me. Can I make a small caveat, maybe? Yeah, sure. For some who want to try it, and I've never played it before, but if you put your name in as Zelda in the game, you automatically start on the second quest. That is correct. So if you want, so you want the game of the week to be second quest? I'm, I think I'm going to do the I've never played it before. Oh, the second quest is great. Um, Have I've, you ever beaten I've, the second quest? I've beaten it twice. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and it is, it is challenging because everything is moved in complete yeah, everything is in, yep. almost most things are in completely different places well the dungeons but, uh, definitely are right the dungeons definitely are the hidden items some of the some of the hidden item locations are the same but what you get in those locations are different okay yeah so like where you buy the blue ring is is in a completely different spot well that's good because i don't remember where to buy the blue ring originally so <laughs> uh, okay see see uh, <laughs> that game off. i'm like i'm on autopilot with that game <laughs> i know except I've seen you it, Yes, except for World 9. World 9, I always, for some reason, get lost for a little bit. Yeah, I've seen you but zip through that real quick one time while waiting online to get the Comic-Con. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I, yeah. I, I almost beat it that time, too. On, on my 3DS. On your 3DS. It was probably the only time I played a handheld. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Legend of Zelda, uh, if you guys have a copy, great. If not, it is available on the Switch Online. Mm-hmm. But uh, that will be this week's Game of the Week. All right, awesome. And we hit a lot of stuff today, a lot of topics. We're not done yet, but first of all, where can everybody find us? 
All right, you guys can find us on Facebook.com slash Retro Gamers Podcast, on Instagram at Retro Gamers Podcast, on Twitter X. at Retro Gamers Pod. You can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube and Spotify at Retro Gamers Podcast, or you can email us at email at theretrogamers.com. All right, Ant, let's start wrapping this up. Not my tenure, but this episode. Let's talk about some news. All right, we got we got some uh, we got a bunch of retro news to go through uh, because we didn't go through any last week. No, uh, first or the first week one prior. I want. Or the week prior. Yeah, I know we've been busy. We were. Busy. I had such a good time at Comic Con. Oh my gosh. And I, I had an interesting time in Singapore. I, um, very interesting time. Uh, but anyway, uh, retro news. Uh, Larry, I know you have a Nintendo Alarmo. Right? I do, yes. And are you happy with your Nintendo I, Alarmo? I'm not just saying this. I honestly am loving my Alarmo. At first, yes, I bought it because I'm like, hey, it's a Nintendo. It's an Alarmo. Apparently, the Internet's hating on it, so let me buy it. But I got to be honest with you. It is waking me up when I need to be woken up. It is annoying enough to get you out of bed. The nice. setup is a little like setting it up is a little not time consuming, but uh, it just it takes a little bit. But okay. once it's set up, it is. I mean, it, it notice it knows when I go to bed. It knows when I wake up. It knows when I move around. It really is an awesome alarm. So I got. I'm not just saying that. It's really good. All right, very cool. Well, there's something you can add to your alarmo if you want a little added entertainment because well. Yes, from my understanding, you can download more songs on it eventually. More, not yes. songs, but sounds and everything, of course. Yeah, but how would you like to play a game on your Alarmo? Because Ooh, the thing's <laughs> barely been out for three weeks, and who's already the, hacked it? The thing has been out for three weeks, but there is somebody online, uh, an individual known as Gary Odernix. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to spell that. Yes, but um, he hacked the Nintendo Alarmo. So he could play Doom on it. Unbelievable. Uh, there's video of this online where he's using the uh, the knob on the top as the controller. Yep. But he's legitimately has found a way to play Doom on it. Now, it doesn't have sound, but it does have the actual game on there. So for those of you who love hacking things, if you want to play Doom on your Alarmo or something else... It is apparently possible. That, man, I mean, I get it's more the novelty to do this. Yes. But I, I mean, the, it's very that that not it's a knob and a button. And you have no idea when I wake up the urge for me to not to be like, no way me, no way me, no way me, no way yep. me. Stop and then break my alarmo because it, it's like hitting a buzzer on a game show. Um, but yes, I, I got to watch. I haven't watched this video yet, but I can only imagine what this thing looks like in action. I'll check it out in a little bit. Yeah. Holy cow. So uh, doom on the alarmo. What will they think of next? Okay. Um, <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. It was like uh, like three, maybe three episodes ago. We started, we were talking a lot about um, video game movies and we started like on yes. lists and stuff like that, which was really cool. Now, uh, this news just came out that uh, Paul W.S. Anderson, hmm. who had, who is known for making uh, video game wise, he did Resident Evil, mm -hmm. Mortal Kombat, the newer Mortal Kombat. Uh, and Monster Hunter movies. I didn't know he is... directed the new Mortal Kombat. Oh yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, he was in. Uh, he. Di oh, I'm sorry. Reverse okay. directed the first Mortal Kombat in the 90s. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Even sorry, better. Sorry. I'm thinking of the new one. Um. Um. Anyway, he will now be cre making a House of the Dead movie. We're gonna. I mean, look the le the gem of the current House of the Dead movie that's available for purchase. Yep. How can you get any better than that? Apparently, uh, a whole plenty. lot. I was just to say a whole lot because he is uh, he is already uh, he's already on board producing. I'm assuming he's going to direct it, but we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, so House of the Dead movie coming from a guy who's very familiar with making video game movies. Well, leading up to re remember all the movies prior to the first Resident Evil movie with Mila Jovovich, mm -hmm. like. All right, look, you can say what you want to say about them, but none of them were, like, taken seriously. I mean, we all love Super Mario Brothers for various different reasons. But the once... 90s one? Yeah, of course, the live action no, one. Come no. on now. Nobody loves that movie. Oh, where's my pizza? Um, so, But when Resident Evil came out, like, that was mm -hmm. the first time. And that movie made money, too. If I remember correctly, yeah. it made a lot of money. But that was the first time where a lot of people went, okay, now we can start taking video game movies seriously. Yeah, I think I think Mortal Kombat kind of started it, but it, it, but it, did, it wasn't. But it, was it didn't. Still... It, it wasn't as big. Like, no, yeah, I agree with you. I feel like Resident Evil people paid attention to. I'm not gonna. I love that first Mortal Kombat movie is 
priceless. But yeah. let's face facts. As much as the action was awesome, the music is what sold that movie. Oh yeah, the mu- that soundtrack I still own. I saw the CD. It's I love that such soundtrack. A, it's such a banging soundtrack. It really so, and is. I'm not saying the movie's bad, but the soundtrack is what got people going with that movie. But yeah, yeah Resident Evil, that's where people were like, all right, this is a good movie. And yes, the current House of the Dead is such a popcorn movie to watch on just a random Tuesday. But if with him at the helm of a new House of the Dead, yes, that mm-hmm. would be something to watch. Yep. So yeah, we're gonna keep an eye out on that one. Cool. Uh, to stay in the uh, to stay in the entertainment world, uh, here is another here's another bit of news, Larry. As if we didn't need another reason to go to Japan. Here's one. Okay. Castlevania, as we know, uh, they've done a couple of couple of series on uh, Netflix. Mm-hmm. Castlevania now is getting a musical in Japan. <laughs> uh it is it, castlevania it, the the name of the musical is going to be called castlevania awakening under the moon uh will be performed by the flower troupe i don't okay. know who the troupe is but they are they are they are located in japan it is a it is a quote-unquote musical romance that will run from june 7th to july 20th 2025 uh, and then from August 16th to September 28th, 2025, two different locations. Tickets go on sale May 17th of next year. Just a note, this is not the first time the Flower Troop has done a musical based off a video game franchise. They also did one off of uh, the Ace Attorney series. <laughs> okay, that I can almost see because I, tr- I bought that movie and that's a, I'm trying to get through that one. Yep, so Castlevania Awakening Under the Moon, a musical romance. Okay, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I'm curious enough to see. Uh, all right, moving on. So, you remember the Super Sega FPGA console that we've been reporting on? I've been keeping a close eye on this thing. Okay, so they've updated the design. They have new pictures online no, of the new design. I didn't want them to touch the design. The design no, was so bad. It, I, it it's still not great, but they've kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Okay, um, that is jagged. Yeah, it's still got the it's still got the Sega colors. They've smoothed out the edges. There's some blue on the right side of it. Um, they are they are currently touting that they are closing in on 200 pre-orders. <laughs> Where's the other pre-order link? I never saw a pre-order link. But here's the other thing: there are there apparently there are people coming out now. Uh, claiming that this project is a complete scam. Oh, what? So, yeah, so I would I would exercise caution if I were you. Oh, here's the pre-reserve. Uh, oh, this pre-reserve is new. Okay, yeah. so I, I mm, so I think I see why because what you do is when you go to supersega.com, yeah. yep. you can pre-reserve it. You're not pre-ordering mm-hmm. it. You're yep. pre-reserving it for three pounds or euros. Yep. Three euros. So, yes, there have been a lot of scams out there where people be like, hey, for a dollar, you lock yourself in on like 50 percent off. And then, you know, there goes your dollar. And that's what's going and that's what's going on here, because there there are people actually um, uh, the developer behind um, analogs consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, He posted on forums where he basically said he's like the PCB is not running any games and cannot run a single game. It is missing everything. It does not have any power supply on the actual PCB to run FPGA. So like he's, and he's thought, and he's going, he goes on and on about it, but he's basically pointing out the fact that they're pointing out the fact that the actual board yeah. doesn't have the capability to do it. Well, so a, to be, grain of salt on this, to be fair. And I understand that. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. To, and first of all, the website they've up the last time I was on this website, which wasn't that long ago, supersega.com, it was very like basic. They've updated their site big time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. first of all, it's given a lot more information. I do see the new design, which I do like. I see we talked, they smoothed it out. It actually looks like mm-hmm. something good. Um, but also I think they're still with all do with all fairness, I think they're still putting it together and getting the money from the pre-reserves. Mm-hmm. Is helping them get more money to be able to put maybe like an actual 
workable prototype out. What my concern is, though, looking at this, is that on the board, they're using an old... I haven't seen people use this memory card. Remember the mm -hmm. square memory cards? Yep. They call it like C, CBs yeah. or something? I've never seen anyone use that in easily six years. Yeah, so um, pre-reserves right. end on November 4th. So Son of a gun! That would timing, be, I got yeah. By the, by the time this drops, this that would be yesterday. Hmm. So, um, so again, exercise a little bit of caution. That's all I'm saying. Um, moving on to other things. So there is a new collection dropping on uh, well, PS4, PS5, Switch, and Xbox on mm -hmm. November 14th. It's the Irem Collection Volume Two. Oh, uh, I just saw this today, actually. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, Iron Collection is going to... Um, uh, this was delayed for some odd reason uh, for a little while, but now it's dropping on November 14th. Uh, there's a debut trailer out that shows you... Uh, gives you a closer look at Gun Force, Gun Force 2, and Air, Air Duel, yep. which are going to be part of the collection. Um, this one is going to be available for... Well, give me a... Uh, there's no free. There's no English price. There's just a Japanese price. Uh, I it was like twenty. I saw it on the Switch. I was going through like like upcoming Switch games, like, and I literally like just saw it. Nah, twenty five maybe. Twenty twenty five bucks. Yeah, yeah. So if you're a fan of the Irem games, um, you can check those out on November fourteenth. Okay. So there's that. Definitely check that out. Yep, and then uh, Double Dragon. Um, very interesting. So at um at san diego comic-con last year they teased um double dragon figures for mm. the first time in like 30 years like they haven't had a figure out in like 30 years um the so there was an update on that um recently that these are going to be coming out um where's the release date on this february 2025 okay february 2025 you're going to be able to buy one of uh looks like three figures you have billy you have jimmy uh billy and jimmy lee and the and you know the antagonist whose name is willie <laughs> hey willie uh, each figure is seven inches tall they come with a variety of weapons and hands that okay. you can switch so they can hold so they can hold the weapons yep uh each figure is gonna retail for 49.99 well, that's not too bad for a figure yeah 50 bucks Not nowadays yeah but they're, they're so yeah. detailed and everything like that all right well if that's not expensive for you maybe this is a little expensive larry um because there is somebody online selling mm -hmm. a bunch of animation cells production notes and pencil sketches from the un from the battle toads animated pilot Ooh. That was originally done by a company called Deke Entertainment. That sounds familiar. Do you know anything about Deke Entertainment? I know nothing about them. Um, the <laughs> Does he pilot... sign paperwork? Uh, no comment. <laughs> the, the, the pilot aired in 1992, mm -hmm. uh, and it was trying to capitalize on the success of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, but... Um, the they canceled it before it went to full series because the uh, ratings were just so bad. Mm. So the only uh, so and then the pilot was released on a VHS in 1994 because Deke would release everything, even if they only did one episode of them. Deke, Deke. Um, <laughs> but the person who has access to the animation cells, the production notes, and pencil sketches, um, a person who I may or may not know, um, <laughs> is trying to sell them all on eBay right now for oh, thirty five. Wow. $35,000. That's it? Okay, I could probably do that. You swing it? Maybe. Just, I don't know. Yeah, just, just take well, out a loan. Seeing how Super Sega is about to steal all my money. We'll right? See. So, um, so, yeah. So, if you want, uh, you can, get, if you love the Battletoads pilot, if you even know it, uh, <laughs> you can have all of the artwork from it for thirty five grand. All right. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, I meant to put this in the entertainment section. I did not. And I don't remember if we talked about this before. We may not have. But um, video game movies are just coming left and right. Oh, yeah, they sure uh, are. We can, we can add the Oregon Trail to the list. Is that getting a movie? The Oregon Trail is getting a, well, quote, unquote, Barbie-style movie adaptation. I don't know how I feel about that. 
Uh, the Barbie style means it will feature musical sections. Uh, the songs are going to be, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to be going to you know, paint a wagon, going to paint it good. Basically. Um, so this is, yeah. So this is in production at Apple. Wow. So you're going to, yeah. So you're going to, you're going to buy it. Uh, <laughs> I, I can stream it. I'm already on. I got an Apple iPhone. I just stream it. Yeah. Uh, but so, still, uh, okay. Yeah, no, it's in production at Apple. It already has a director and a producer attached. Okay. S screenplay is already underway. Uh, hmm. um, and like I said, it's going to feature musical sections in the vein of Barbie. That's what they said, in the vein of Barbie. So okay. no actors have signed on yet, but it's happening. Oregon Trail, the movie. Okay. All right. We'll All check right. it out. I I want I want snake bites. I want dysentery. I want the works. Oh, 100%. If that's not in there, I ain't watching. I'll cancel my. And not only that, somebody needs to die of dysentery while singing, <laughs> <laughs> like in the middle of their music. Like in the mid, I can see it in the middle of their musical number. They just die, so we never get the end of the song. <laughs> it's just that's it. That's awesome. Take your hat off, right. boy. That's a dollar bill. Uh, moving <laughs> on. Glover, do you remember the game Glover? I on do. I might okay. actually have it on the Evercade. Uh. Yes, because they announced it on the Evercade, didn't yep. they? Yep. Uh, didn't they? Did they also announce it on the Switch Online Plus or whatever the heck they call that one? Uh, hold on, I a, a YouTube video just started playing in my head very loudly. Uh, oops. Um, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Glover. Yeah. Is it I, on the Switch Online? I'm not paying attention to this podcast anymore. Um, no, Glover clearly. is no. I think it might be. I think they might be selling it on its own. To be honest with you. Okay. Well, you'll be happy to know. There is an HD remastered coming. That's probably the one the, I'm thinking of then. For PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and Switch. That's... Uh, oh, you know what it was as well? It did get a, a limited... It might have been it, limited run physical release. Yeah, I think they might have done that yeah. uh, at a certain point. But yes, so there is going to be... Uh, yeah, limited run games did a physical version. and It's already sold out. Mm -hmm. But uh, there will be an, a full HD remaster coming soon. All right, that's cool. But yeah, I haven't I haven't opened this one yet. My yeah. Pico Interactive Volume 4. Ah, there you go. So. With Glover right there on the front. Yep. Uh, also, you know what? Else, what? Glover's also available on the Anstream Arcade. That's where I played it. Ah, there you go. Yep, I, the PS1 I version. Have, I still have to sign up for that. Oh, I'm telling you. Now, I know, it's on my PS5. I just got to sign up. Okay. Uh, sticking with the Switch Online, last week for Halloween. Halloween week. What? Uh, Halloween was last week? Yeah, Halloween was last week. Hmm. Uh, two new games got uploaded onto the Switch Online. Oh, yes. Very happy uh, about these. There were Turok 2 Seeds of Evil and Shadow Man were both added to the N64 collection. Did you have Shadow Man? I did not have Shadow oh, Man. Oh, I thought you did. Okay, never mind. It sounds <clears> like <throat> a game I should have. That's maybe why I had. thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know what? I mean, and you know what? It's probably one I'm going to want to go back and add to my collection because I can put it on my Polymega. You can. Hopefully. So, so yeah, Shadow Man and Turok 2, Seeds of Evil. And if Nintendo didn't have enough news this week, Larry, did you download Nintendo Music? I did, yes. Oh, my God. It's so much fun. I'm not going to lie. I'm not just saying that. It's really fun. I mean, fun. Well, it's just know, music. I've been, I've been using uh, Spotify for a long time, and I've been playing video game stations on there. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool to see one straight up from Nintendo. Because, you does, know, obviously first party. That's what I'm saying. Like, does Spotify have first party Nintendo music on there? Probably not, right? It's probably all third. I, I No, I mean, I've listened to Zelda tracks, Mario tracks on there. But were they stuff. like... I don't, know if, I don't know if they're legit. That's but, what I'm saying. Like, I don't know if it's official. But, you know, these are the hold from right. the game. These are the official releases. And it's not just a music player. Like, they did some things with it. Like, for example, mm -hmm. not all songs, but you can extend songs. Like, the Super Mario Brothers from the NES. Mm -hmm. It's like a two and a half minute song. But if you wanted to, you can extend it and loop it to 60 minutes. Not oh, to that's where, really like, cool. But not to where, like, it will just stop and then restart. Seamlessly play for 60 minutes over and over and over again. Um... But yeah, there's something about having the first party. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they just uploaded um, Super Mario Brothers Wonder music. Oh, yes, and, I did read that. Mm -hmm. And even to the part, like, short part, like, they have, like, 30 seconds of, like, you know what I mean? So 
Very cool, very fun. And you're right. Some of those I've been listening to Donkey Kong Country, actually. That's I was just gonna say, yeah, Donkey Kong Country, which I just turned 30, by the way. Yeah. Uh last week. Uh, and they have other stuff like Dr. Mario, uh, Ocarina of Time, Metroid Prime, uh, Nintendo Dogs. Yeah. No, they got uh, some weird ones there. Yeah, yeah, Super Mario Galaxy, uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Breath of the Wild. Woohoo. Mm, boo. So uh, yeah, lots of lots of fun stuff on there. Uh, Kirby Streamland also on there. So yeah, yep. And you have to have a you have to have a Switch Online subscription in order to play it. You do. And it in itself is free, but you're right to listen to the music. You need an NSO uh, subscription. But I recommend it. It's just again just fun to listen to. That's all it is. And they'll be dropping new music as time goes on. Yes. So um... actually, funny enough, the only song I didn't see on there, what, and I think because it's available commercially is the um jump man song from super mario odyssey the one that oh. pauline sings oh yeah they where the words one. are in the booklet oh that that might be a light that might be a it might a be a license. issue with the yeah. but also it is like i bought it on itunes when it first came out when the game mm-hmm. came out so that's why i think maybe that one because otherwise i've never seen any nintendo official nintendo soundtracks now i Ed, did you ever buy through nintendo power official soundtracks because i have bought a few soundtracks no. in the past I have not. I remember Donkey Kong Country vividly playing that over and over again. I might have had a Zelda one. I don't remember. No. Nope. But that's why maybe you know, that's why I've listen to Donkey Kong Country. It reminds me. No. Of well, you remember my my trips to Japan. I bought actual CDs. You did at you did. Um, at Tower Records. Yeah. <laughs> Tower Records. Uh, yeah. yeah. Castlevania, Mario, Zelda, yep. Final Fantasy. I still have those soundtracks. Awesome. Um, okay. Uh, Atari 50, moving on to Atari 50. Mm-hmm. Their final DLC expansion drops this week. Oh. So if you have Atari 50, uh, this is the second DLC. The first one dropped last month. Uh, the second DLC will include more video for the uh, documentary uh, mm-hmm. that they have on there uh, with a bunch of interviews. And 19 more games will be added to the lineup, bringing the total number of games on that Atari 50 uh thing to 148 games wow amazing uh, yep and the games that are going to be on this dlc include and these are all for the not all uh most of them are from the 2600 m network Ooh, oh yes okay that was like a something so yeah <laughs> uh so you're getting air raiders ant bear which i'm very curious about because it was unreleased ant bear mm. uh Armor Ambush, Astro Blast, Frogs and Flies, International Soccer, Dark Cavern, Star Strike, Super Challenge Baseball, Super Challenge Football, Sword Fight, Sea Battle. Both of those two were not released. Ooh, unreleased okay. ones. Uh, those are all M Network. And then the other games coming out, uh, Tower of Mystery, which was an unreleased prototype. Oh, wow. So never yeah, they came had out. a few of those on there. Yep. Uh, video Pinball for the 2600. Basketball for the 2600. Hardball for the Atari 8-bit, Final Legacy, a prototype for the 5200, Zari Arena for Atari 8-bit, and Desert Falcon for the 7800. Those are the 19 new games. I think I have Desert Falcon on the VCS. (laughs) Um, So the M Network, uh, 1982, Mattel Mattel Electronics was a uh, spinoff game division, Mm -hmm. and it was dubbed M Network. Um, And actually, it was create in television games for the Atari 2600. So that's what these actually were. Ah. Um, in fact, you can buy on Atari as well a physical cart of a collection of M Network games, like because they've been putting out the new Plus consoles. Uh, mm-hmm. And that one has four games on it, uh, on, of which you mentioned. Armor Ambush, Astro Blast, Frogs and Flies, and Star Strike. So Atari, mm-hmm. again, kind of like the Polymega, Atari's making moves. Good yeah, moves, too. I know my buddy Mario ordered a 7800 plus, I think. He's waiting for that to show up later nice. on this month. So, All right. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, Atari's definitely, they're definitely back in the game. And they're, and they're, and they're and coming on strong, too, oh, yeah. everything that they're doing. All right. Uh, two more pieces of news. One yeah. is, uh, do you remember the game Croc? Croc, the Legend of Gobos. I do. Yes. I, I never played it, but I remember of it. I, I never played it either. Um, but there is a remastered version coming out on the Switch. Oh, okay. Uh, it releases uh, December 2024 for uh, 2999 digitally. Hmm. Okay. Uh, also, though, they are collaborating with Rock it, Rocket Games. Not mm-hmm. two words. Rock it Games. <laughs> okay. 
to launch physical copies, kind of like Limited Run. I guess this is another another company that does uh, uh, hmm. physical releases. So they're doing uh, a standard and a collector's edition for Croc. One is forty bucks for the standard. The collector's edition is a hundred thirty bucks. Look at this. And obviously, the collector's edition comes with. Uh, it comes with a, an eight-inch statue, rosin statue of Croc. It does. A uh, certificate of authenticity, a keychain, a poster, stickers, a four-disc CD soundtrack. Oh, wow. Consisting of over 100 tracks. A um, hundred? Holy cow. Yeah, so if you're want, if you interested, if you're a big Croc fan uh, and you want that physical copy, go to rocketgames.com. It's R-O-C-K-I-T, two words, Rock It Games. All right, last bit of news. Yes. Last thing. Uh, I, I saved this for last because I just thought it was really funny. So <laughs> um, Nintendo released, uh, apparently they released a frying pan in Japan. <laughs> what? It's it's a frying pan in the shape of a super mushroom. <laughs> so, you, so like, let's say you want to make a giant mushroom pancake, you can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, the manufacturer of Bandai Spirits is currently telling people not to use their Nintendo frying pan, uh, which was released on October 25th. Um, but owners have been advised that uh, the frying pan has been found to discolor the oil when it when heat is applied. That's not good. And they're currently investigating if it's just getting discolored or if something is happening to the oil that is maybe not so good for somebody to ingest. <laughs> Look at this thing. I mean, it's a, it's a cute looking frying pan. Well, but... it, was, it was sold in conjunction with Super Mario Party Jamboree's release. It was like oh, one of those limited yes. edition pro things you can buy. Oh, man. Uh, it was not released here, but clearly I think we're better off without it. That's like one of the, remember Loot Crates? Yes. One of, it was, wait, it was either Loot Crate or one of the other ones. I can't remember now. But it, in one of the crates that I got was a um, Infinity Gauntlet um uh um Pop oven holder. glove oven yeah. glove yeah and but they specifically said don't use it for the oven is but that I, why you gave it to me i uh, probably same reason why i gave you the xbox 360 for it red ringed thank you very much um no wonder why i burned myself <laughs> but like, actually okay, i should this... say thank th thank god i don't cook because i didn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all right this will be interesting then see what comes out with this frying pan so yeah so, well but if anything, buy it and use it as I'm a weapon. Sure, someone will hack it to play it into. Why not just imagine it. smacking somebody in the face and having that imprint of the mushroom, <laughs> like a cartoon character, just like a cartoon. Holy all right, God. that's all I got for retro news. All right, let's wrap this one up. And one more time, where can they find us? You guys can find us on Facebook.com slash Retro Gamers Podcast, on Instagram at Retro Gamers Podcast, on Twitter X. at Retro Gamers Pod. You can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube and Spotify at Retro Gamers Podcast, or you can email us at email at theretrogamers.com. All right. And have a wonderful week. You have a great week as well. And happy belated birthday as well. Thank you. And thank you again for the gifts. I absolutely love that. Ah, no problem. And folks, we'll catch you everywhere next week right here on the Retro Gamers Podcast. Thank you.